So let's consider the following double integral defined as i. Here we want to take the double integral of sine of x squared and our region D, our region of integration, is uh, described by these upper and lower limits. Now, usually when we're looking at double integrals, we work on the inside integration first and then move on to the outside integration. But there's a problem with this one. If we just consider the inside integration, well, we're trying to find first off the antiderivative of sine of x squared with respect to x. Now, that's very difficult. Uh, in fact, we cannot find the antiderivative of sine of x squared with respect to x in terms of elementary functions. So what do we do? Well, our aim here is to reverse the order of integration. So it's hard to find the antiderivative of this with respect to x, but it's much easier uh, if you do it with respect to y. So how do we do that? Well, essentially what we're going to do is re-describe our region D and consequently there will be a change in our limits of integration up here. So, so at the moment, under this form, our region D is just y is between 0 and 1 and x is between y and 1. Okay, so what we're going to try to do there is re-describe this region D. You can see that here are two parallel lines and two non-parallel lines. What we're going to do is switch those around. So we've got two parallel lines here and two non-parallel lines. The easiest way to do this is to draw a picture and to understand the geometry of the problem. So, y equals 0 and y equals 1, they're going to be the lines here and just the axis. And x equals 1 and x equals y. It's going to look something a little like this. Okay, so our region lies somewhere in between all these curves. So which one is it? Well, y is between 0 and 1, so it's going to lie somewhere in this infinite strip. And x is to the right of y, but to the left of 1. So the region is just this triangle here. So this will be my region D. Okay, so how do I determine, uh, re-describe this, this triangular region in terms of two parallel lines uh, bounding x and two non-parallel lines bounding y? Okay, well, all we really do is rearrange our picture and, and the labelling a little bit. So, So here, instead of having y equals x, oh, sorry, x equals y, I'm going to have y equals x. Okay. Okay. So what I need now is I need two parallel. Here we've got two parallel lines going horizontally. In my new description, I'm going to use two parallel lines going vertically. So, to get this region, all I do is choose two parallel lines that are vertical. 
So x is going to be between 0 and 1. And y is going to be above this line, but below this line. So Well, how has that helped us? Well, now we can switch the order of integration and place our new limits of integration into our integral. Right, so let's do that. Remember, the constants go on the outside integral. And, of course, the function stays the same. And I am reversing the order of integration. OK, so the normal rules apply. Do the inside integral first. Integrate x, uh, sorry, integrate sine of x squared with respect to y. And if I put in y equals x and y equals 0, I reduce it to a single integral. So this is an integral that it is just a single integral. We can easily evaluate it either by inspection or by substitution. You would let uh, u equal x squared. You did it by substitution. Okay, so there I've integrated it by inspection, and now it's just a matter of putting in uh, these numbers. So you'll get minus one half cos one minus a half cos zero, so that'll be plus one half. Okay, and that, that's our that's our um, answer. So the basic idea with these integrals is, if you can do the inside integration first, then do it. Here, that wasn't an option. What we did was draw a sketch of d, re-describe, then re-describe d, reverse the order of integration with the new limits of integration.